So I am angry. Now I'll get into the details as to why in a minute, but for today's video we have two topics to talk about. The first one is in regards to a comparison between these major cruise lines and their Wi-Fi packages. For one, things do not make sense. It kind of makes me really wonder what the heck is going on when it comes to these, well, in my opinion, price gougings versus the other cruise lines that seem to be somewhat doing it right. And for the second topic, as most of you know, I I am here on assignment. I am on Carnival Cruise Line's oldest operating ship, the Carnival Paradise. And well, I looked into the lounge chair situation. As most of you know, Carnival has been recently tightening up their rules when it comes to the fights and scraps on board. They're fining people. They're putting in curfews, implementing them for kids for one in the morning. And well, even the people that are chair hogging out there, they're tightening up with them as well. They had a rule that's been implemented and well, it hasn't really been enforced, but they're saying they're going to crack down on it now. I've done some, some investigating and well, I've, I've made some discoveries I'm going to talk about in today's video. So riddle me this, how is it that the Wi-Fi here on this, well, let's be honest, old and seasoned ship is better than the Wi-Fi and less expensive than on a brand new ship with all of the technological capabilities of well, any modern ship being able to give you the best Wi-Fi possible, some of the best Wi-Fi at sea. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about Royal Caribbean. About a month and some change ago, I was over in Europe, Amsterdam to be specific, and I sailed on board the first revenue sailing for NCL's newest ship with luxurious touches, the NCL Prima. And I paid $400 for the 10-day sailing for what they call premium Wi-Fi. However, upon just Discovery, I realized that the Wi-Fi was trash, boo-boo, gray water. It didn't make sense, and, well, I felt like I didn't get my money's worth. I eventually got a refund, but it's something that really irritated me. Now, when I said at the beginning of the video that I was angry, I do believe that that was maybe a little too much. I'm more so, I guess, aggressively curious as to how NCL was able to come up with this price point with really no validation, no valid argument, because meanwhile, here I am on this old ship of Carnival, I paid a hundred dollars for five days for the premium Wi-Fi. I could have got it cheaper because, well, if I had just bought it earlier, which I don't know what I was thinking, I could have got it for, I think, $80, but you're talking about a price point between $17 and $20 a day here, and the Wi-Fi is 10 times better than it was on board the NCL Prima. How does that even happen? Now let's be fair, this is some first world nitpicky stuff to talk about, however I believe that if you pay for something you should get what you paid for and it should justify the means. $400 is a lot of money to pay for Wi-Fi, I get it, but most of you know this is what I do for a living. I need the Wi-Fi in order to be able to work. However, when I look at the Wi-Fi packages that are available on other cruise lines as well, then they typically stack up and equal out to what I'm doing here with Carnival. You guys know I have sailed with Virgin Voyages four times time and with the exception of one cruise the valiant lady that i sit out of barcelona with over in europe going to places like abiza the wi-fi was horrible it was poor but let's be fair i didn't upload a lot because the wi-fi was down and i didn't really need it anyway i had a great time i actually got to just organically enjoy myself but when it came to the other three sailings that i've sailed with virgin voyages i bought the premium wi-fi and guess how much money it was $50 for premium Wi-Fi for the entire cruise. How is it that Virgin is able to do this, but the other cruise lines can't? I'm not knocking Carnival. I think $100 for five days of premium Wi-Fi, considering it's not that bad, is kind of worth it. It's not bad. You also got to look at Royal Caribbean. They had the best Wi-Fi at sea. Well, now they actually have it, rather, because they said and claimed that they did. And Well, depending on the ship, well, you would find out otherwise. But now they have linked up with Elon Musk Starlink, and as of right now, they still have the same prices that they originally had for the regular Wi-Fi. And Starlink is immaculate. It's absolutely amazing. So my question is, again, what's up with NCL and this ridiculous price tag? I still don't get it. All of this reminds me of the early 2000s with cell phone companies. You remember back when everybody had their Blackberries and their Razors? By the way, what kind of phones did you have back in the early 2000s? I'm curious, let me know. But anyway, you know, most companies, I think with the exception of, what was it, AT&T, you had to pay for your minutes and all of the internet and everything that you did when it came to using your cell phone for cell phone use purposes. By that I mean contacting people. And then I think with AT&T, after like 9 o'clock it was free, or AT&T I think it was 7, 
and the rest it was like 9 p.m. and things slowly started to change. But for this particular situation with the Wi-Fi, it's like that moment never comes. The 7 p.m. and the 9 p.m. never comes. But either way, guys, I don't want to make this a rant. I'm just legitimately curious. It's 2022, and maybe it's just me. I'm just curious to see what is giving the cruise lines the idea that they could justify any of these prices? Do you think it's valid? Let me know in the comment section below. Moving on, let's talk about what's going on with Carnival in this lounge deck chair thing situation. You know what I'm talking about. These things got so many different names. So like I said, Carnival has been recently implementing new policies and reinforcing old rules, one of which is the lounge chair situation out on the Lido deck. Carnival has said that if you are in these chairs, you have to be in those chairs. If you are not, then well, they're going to remove your belongings and they're going to put it over at the towel center and you're going to leave that chair to somebody else that is going to use it. Now, I did some investigating while I'm here. I looked around like a ninja, but not as cool, to see if Carnival was even enforcing these rules. They do have a sign posted up. Now, given I haven't been on a Carnival ship in over a year, so I don't know if that sign has already been there, but they're stating that if you are away from your chair for more than 40 minutes, then, well, your belongings are going to be removed. Now, I have stated that I do believe that there is the potential, and all of you have have agreed as well that there is the potential for there to be some problems when it comes to this because if somebody let's say goes to get some ice cream or they go to guys burger or whatever you name it go play some bingo and they come back and all their stuff has been moved like their cell phone and their bananas then they're going to be potentially angry and it could cause some problems Carnival says that they're going to place like stickers or time stamps on the seats whenever somebody is not in the seat. However, like I said, I looked at all the chairs, did some investigating, and I didn't see anything. So I don't know how they're going to enforce this stuff. I also looked around, and like I said in earlier videos, I've been wondering who is going to enforce these rules. You know, because if you think about it, it's not going to be the bar staff. They have too many other things going on, serving all the guests their drinks. It's not going to be the towel staff because they got to hand people towels and stuff, so who's going to be the one to do it? You know what? Fine. I I'll do it. I'll do it. A Carnival Cruise Line, if you pay me $10,000 a day, I will do it. I will, I will mark everything with, a, with a, a permanent marker, right? And I will write down the timestamp, and I will leave it right there. And I will even confront the people that, that say that they've had the chair, okay? Because I'm, I'm not gonna fight them, all right? I'm not, I'm not, okay? I'll tell them we're gonna have a, a, a belly flop competition or maybe a break dance battle, they'll lose. And just like that, the world will be saved from chair hawks. Anyway, that's all I got. I'm gonna keep looking around and doing some investigating with the chairs because I'm legitimately curious how Carnival's going to enforce this stuff. But I'm gonna wrap this video up, guys. I have some more exploring to do. I have another vlog, hopefully coming around 6 p.m. on my other channel, Jay the Nomad, so make sure you check that out. Also, while I'm here, I wanna thank all, I think we got like 45 Patreons already. You guys have not gone and joined my Patreon membership. I have all kind of perks and secret private videos and cool stuff coming up on there as well as free cruise giveaways and down the road. I want to do resorts and stuff like that too because I'm trying to make it for both of my channels not just regarding cruise ships give people an option a range of things to choose from but that's the idea down the road but I will be giving away free a free cruise next month so make sure you guys go check that out my patreon is in the description box below I'll also link it in the comments but let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section below hit that like button on your way out and just know that I love and appreciate every single one of you thanks for watching take it easy